This video is about the horizontal cutting frame. A lot of what I talk about in these videos is on the Ornamental Turning Book of Knowledge website, and a link to that site is in the comments. For this video, I will be demonstrating the horizontal cutting frame using a plain 4 rosette. Frankly, it's because it's fun. A horizontal cutting frame is used to make cuts in either side or the end of the object. This is called a horizontal cutting frame because the cutter that it holds, which is this little piece right here, spins horizontally. There are also are vertical cutting frames which spin at this direction, and then a universal cutting frame which can turn at any direction, any angle between horizontal and vertical. The one that I built was using the instructions from Bill Ohm's website, and I put a link to that in the comments below. As I said, the cutting frame that I use holds a fly cutter. There are other kinds of cutters that are carbide bits and such, but um, it uses a different cutter holder right here than the one I have, and it's a little bit more difficult to make. So I chose the easier option for now. And like a router bit, this spins around, but the key point is that this spins slower, so it's not as dangerous to have out there in the open, though you're not getting your finger up there because it will hurt. I do speak from experience. This is, gets driven. There's a cord that goes around here and then up to an overhead drive. You can mount a drive on the back of this, and there are some designs that do that, but I prefer the overhead drive. And the reason that I prefer that is that I only have to have one motor for a whole bunch of different cutting frames or maybe even drilling frames, and that's a different video that you're going to see later. I also have that motor separated from my head, so the noise is further away from me. And by having it further away from me, I have it not so much in the way of seeing what I want to do. And finally, it theoretically transmits less vibration from the motor to the cutting head, so it reduces the amount of chatter in what you see. So give me a minute, I'm going to hook it all up, and then we're going to see this thing in action. This is a piece of walnut that I've got here in the chuck. Just brought it right off the uh, Powermatic lathe. I sanded it down with a 220 grit sandpaper just so that it would look smooth for what we're going to do today. Walnut's not a good wood for doing ornamental turning with. It doesn't hold figure very well, but it's a really great wood for what we're going to do, which is prototyping to see what happens. And the reason for that is because it's really cheap, and if it totally is something you don't want, you can throw it away and you didn't lose a lot of money. So let's uh, get it started and see what happens. Well, you can certainly see that I didn't center it very well. Tell you what, let's run this in reverse. I'm inventing this 20 thousandths at a time. This is a really soft wood, so it's not a problem. Plus, we're cutting with the grain instead of across it, so that makes it a little bit easier also.
I'm going to advance this to the right off camera and then I'll be back once I'm done. Now I don't know about you, but I think it's really cool to be able to do a square on a lathe. So let's do the end piece here. And it's going to do a really neat design here, so give me a second and we'll fire it up. pretty far off on the vertical alignment with that tool but uh, it does a really cool design in the end and I think you get an idea of what a horizontal cutting frame can do. So thank you for your time and I hope this was useful for you.